Okay, so I'm here with Mr. Dara Ward, who will make his long-awaited, well, not long-awaited, because it kind of came out of blue. We thought he was going to be fighting yeah. amateur, but it's it's a very sought-upon uh, professional debut. He went 6-1 and one as an amateur. He bet the who's who. Um, he's had some cracking fights, some electric, electric fights. Uh, and now on a show that he featured on twice before Premier, he's going to make his pro debut. So congratulations on your pro debut. How is it looking and how does it feel to make it on Premier? Because I know you fought on them before and so obviously you know them. How does it feel to be fighting on Premier for this show up in Dublin? Uh, it's fucking, it's great. Listen, uh, thanks for having me on, Dave, first off. But it's uh, it's great to be able to jump onto Premier. They've always been, <clears throat> they've always been very good to me. And uh, Niall's been good to me and he's always been getting me good matchups and stuff like that. Uh he's always tried to promote me well, which I appreciate. And um yeah, I started talking to him about turning pro and he came to me with a good fight and I purely leave it up to uh my coaches, Chris and Phil. Um I'm just kinda like I'm just kinda like I wanna fight and that's it. And then it's up to them. They can look at the guys that we get sent in and I let them make their decision. I'm like, yeah, whoever I don't care if the guys five and all, ten and all, oh and five or whatever, like just whatever fight you want to pick for me, put in front of me and that's what fight I'll do. Uh it kind of uh it came as it came as a bit of a it came fast to me turning pro, but like it's um it's it's something that we've been talking about for a while and we've been planning for a while and it's something that was been put in my head by Chris and by Phil and like it's kind of like it's just in the last few months, it's been realizing that actually I am at that level and I'm coming to that level, which I didn't think I was going to be like, I started when I was 14 and I was a kid. So like coming to, up to the level now and like they're saying that to you, like it's nearly like you start thinking about it, like that move up, that turn, like, and then I'm just like, I'm just like, it's just kind of, it's, it's mad for me to be like seeing all that happening now. Like it's actually happening for me. I'm very happy that's happening. But I'm, I'm focusing in now and I'm getting ready just for, uh, the goal time now. Yeah, and what a compliment. Obviously, like you've got Chris and Phil, like tennis, yeah. something like that. But we we'd seen it, obviously, you were out for a little bit as well. Like you got better and better every fight, and, and your last fight, yeah. the Brian Manning fight, kind of just showed kind of your skill level and where you were yeah. at. Um yeah. obviously I was looking forward to the Jess Paolo fight, but I think me and you and talked, you said that was gonna be your last amateur fight, anyways. Yeah. There was yeah. no there was no one really else that kind of that interested you or you felt that would yeah. be kind of up to the level um with your opponent you've got a decent opponent in front of you it's not like it's a gimme fight this isn't going to be the yeah. easy fight for you how are the preparations different for this fight than amateur or is there any differences um i've known a lot more sprints uh i just want to i want to be able to run through this 15 minutes and i just want to be able to i want to be able to go in there and i want to be able to show me full arsenal and not be worried about anything silly like uh getting out bright around like that that won't be happening i've done like i've done a lot of road work and i've done a lot of uh prep to be ready for the 15 minutes and then just the only difference really is instead of doing five three minute rounds i've started doing three five minute rounds and moving around with all the pros like i have been doing anyways i was doing that a lot anyways helping the guys out for their fights guys like leon guys like amran guys like adam uh they're all great training partners and it's just been a matter of just upping the ante to that. That's mainly what I've been focusing on, trying to get them rounds in and then just simulating everything for the five minute rounds, changing my pads to five minute rounds instead of trees, just everything like that. And it's it's been it's been a grand adjustment period really. It took me about a week to adjust and now the five minutes feel grand to me. I enjoy the five minutes and I like having that that time to work in there kinda. Yeah, no, it's good. And you named a couple of the, the training parties you have and and what I really like about you and your coach, and, and more so about your coach as well, is how the selflessness of him, that when you have a fighter like yourself, you've got Dave, you've got more coming up as well. Yeah. Um, and you've obviously seen like when you would be, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, but you'd be a smaller club. And you see yeah. something like obviously Matisse, which he, which he went to SBG. But the fact that yeah. he was able to put his ego aside, merge with Chris, obviously, because they have a good relationship. Yeah. And then the, the cross training for me, that dynamic is fantastic. And I think smaller clubs should do it because like that, you don't want to be yeah. losing your big fighters. That obviously is going to keep you there. Then you've got the yeah. benefits of like that, Leon Hill, the Shelley brothers, Amra, exactly. uh, Taka. Like there's just so many good, what's, what's it like training in KF? Oh no. What's it like having Phil and Chris in your corner, having two coaches like that, that are complete OGs of this game? 
uh, it's deadly. And to be honest, it made a real difference in the last fight. Uh, just kind of getting into my head what I needed to get done. That was the first fight, I think, that uh, Chris and Phil were both in my corner together. It's mainly been Phil. Uh, there's actually, I met I met Chris at my first uh, novice fight. I think I was only 14 or 15. And him and Phil were actually in my corner for that fight. They were just, it was just kind of, it wasn't even a corner. It, it was them standing on the edge of a mat shouting like, uh, but that's when I first met Chris. And then that actually, that last fight, I think was one of the, one of the first, uh, one of the first times he was in my corner. And believe it or not, actually, when we were about 16, there was a young guy from his gym, Ben, and uh, me and Ben actually fought and Chris and Phil cornered against each other. <clears throat> and after, after we fought, we started training a lot together and that kind of sparked a bit of a relationship. And then uh, after COVID, kind of, I started uh, training up again. I think I had the Dan O'Sullivan fight. And after that, I was like, right, I need to like kind of shift things up a bit. I need more bodies. I need more people to be training with. And that was like, that was the move to Chris's. And I'll always be grateful for Phil because he's the one that recommended me to do that and pushed me to do that kind of. And I've only ever seen benefits from it. And like, he doesn't want, like, he's a fucking... He's I couldn't have asked for a better person to have in me corner, like and have as someone to guide me like that and someone that I can follow, like and I can take little things from because he he like he's he's just in there. He's in there for the right reasons. He really is so is Chris as well. And they're both just in there for the right reasons and that's all that I enjoy having in me corner. Pure, just honest guys just want to see me do well. I want to do well for them. It creates a good relationship. Like it creates a serious relationship. Same with all the guys on the team. That's all we want. We all just want to see each other keep winning. And there's no like there's no there's no jealousy or anything like that. We can't have that in the gym. Like there's never any etiquette like that. It's always like we're always delighted to see each other doing well. Like that's and that's a very important to me. I like I like having that and I enjoy having that with the team. No, I love that. And it's it's kind of mad how it's kind of full circle. Your first novice fight, the two of them corn you. And I believe so. Yeah. The team will be calling you. This it like that's kind of gone yeah. the circle. It's kind of mad how that has transpired, but it's yes. also a very, very good story. And uh, just yeah. to touch on Phil, like you said, it shows he's a proper coach because he's your best yeah. interest at heart. He's not saying yeah. he's my star. He's this. I'm keeping him here for me. He said yeah. he wants the best for you, and that's what he's done. He's went out and put you in the best position possible. Looking forward to to this this upcoming fight. But in yeah. terms of your opponent. Have you been looking into much, or do you leave that to to your coaches, and then they come back to you with the things? Because rather than look into it too much, or because it's a pro fight, have you looked a bit more, or do you still just leave it to the coaches to do? Um, so I look at a few things, just the way he stands, the way he comes out. Like I'll I watched a few of his fights, uh, just seeing some little things that I can do, and then talking to Chris and Phil about it, and then Chris and Phil themselves will be looking at their own footage, and they'll be coming to me saying little things. Right, we can do this, we can do that. And just kind of like I have, like I I have like a good kind of a thing there with them. We can drill a lot of the stuff that we want to work on. For mainly like for Marion, we've been drilling just a lot of work with southpaws and uh, little things, little things like that. Just some little sneaky entries and stuff like that. Um, just like just all the all the all the all the basic shit that we could be looking at, and we take everything into account, and then. After that, it's all just about I can I can take the precautions that I need to take, and then after that, it's going out and fighting my fight, going out and not playing into his style, going in and still doing what I have to do and getting the win. That's that's all. It's that's all that's in my head. Going out there and putting on a performance where I'm going to get the win. That's all I want. Finish like I can't see it. I can't see it going outside the first round. I don't think I don't think my coaches can either. Like it's. The work that I've been putting in and what they've been seeing out of me and what I've been able to do in the last few weeks, few months, few years with this, like I think I just go in there and I'm gonna do what not do what I want, but I'm gonna get my game going and it's gonna be very hard to stop. Yeah, so we're yeah we're you're predicting the first round finish. Hopefully, I'll be there on Friday to to see you. And as for a card, it, it's quite good as well. I'm looking forward to you. And the other ones, obviously, you've got Jenderson Castro as well, who's going to be yeah. fighting somewhere else from SVG, who's always yeah. an exciting fighter to watch. And yeah, that'd be a good top, fight. they've got top top amateurs on it. But um, yeah. with this being obviously this is going to be the first December, you're going to enjoy Christmas. What? Yeah. What what what's your year? What's your plans for the year next year? Are you just gonna wait till the new year and then come together with your coaches and decide like how active are you looking to be? Or yeah, probably any- probably 
probably start having a talk about the next one about I'd say about an hour or two hours after the fight's done. <laughs> That's usually the way it goes. Like it's just I need I need to be occupied that kind of way. Um, we were thinking about going again in February. Premier, we're on about going again in February. I'm not sure if we're going to now. That's just kind of little rumors. Don't uh, don't quote me on that. But Premier, we're on about going again in February, and I thought it might be a good fix. Um, me and my missus only found out a few months ago that before my last amateur fight, actually, that we're expecting a baby. So I'm buzzing for that. I can't wait for it. But the baby's going to be here in April. So I'm thinking this one in December, maybe one in February, and then a little break take care of Baba, take care of daddy duties and everything like that. And then um and then maybe again, maybe again in December if I can get back any earlier. If baby wants to sleep on me and I can get back a little bit earlier, I'll 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 uh, I'll try to do that. But we that's what I'm thinking anyways, February and then I'm gonna have a little lull, a little break. Just take time off. Keep training and everything like that. But just do what I have to do. Yeah, hundred percent I like that. Um congratulations first to you and your partner that's for awesome. The arrival I have one, he's now 18. So my my, my my subscription is up on him. I give him I, I don't have to give the maintenance, but I give him money anymore. But it's it's right. one of the blessings you'll have in life. There's nothing like having a child, and especially yeah. at small ages. So um yeah. yeah, so you've got December and then you've got like that. I know there's gonna be just a goofy, I want to say cage conflict, uh clan wars is match. So like there's a whole host of shows, and you see the likes of IOR, which you fought on before Premier. Cage conflict clan was they're all putting more and more pro fights on. How does that feel for you as a new pro fighter, knowing that there's that many options re- regionally? Uh, Cage yeah. Legacy and Clan Wars have now merged with PFL as well, which is an yeah, yeah, exciting that. thing. How do, actually well, what do you make of that? That uh, with the PFL merge with those things because they're obviously they're not just going to take strictly from Cage Legacy or Clan Wars. They're going to be watching the whole island. How does that make you feel to think that there's Promotion that in in the country looking for fighters like you. Um, it's it's definitely interesting. Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't really. I looked at the post obviously, but I'm not sure what exactly they meant. Like if they were going to have like tournaments on clan wars or tournaments on K's like to try win contracts or anything like that. But listen, I think it's unreal. I, always when we get more eyes on the sport and more eyes on the talent in Ireland, it's always deadly, and I'm always all for that because. The level in Ireland is insane, and it's only when you kind of like I heard people talking about it for ages, and it's gonna kind of only when you go out and you see yourself the level, and you see the level in other places and other countries that you're like, fuck, we're a high level little country. We have like we have a little country, and even like like we have like we have good lads. Like it's just like and a lot of guys have mixed records on the island and losing records and stuff like that. But every fight here is a tough fight. There's so many tough fights. So. Like for the guys that are fine MMA in Ireland, I'm delighted for them to get that recognition and try break through to that. And I think Ireland's after getting great recognition in uh in the last year and the last year or two, just with guys signing on to UFC, there's more guys signing on to PFL. It's just it's great to see and you like to see your fellow countrymen, fellow country women all doing well in the sport. Like, you know, it's all we're all we all have the same goal here, you know. At the end of the day, I the mo the people I have most in common with are my fellow fighters. Even though I'm fighting them, like Mar- at the end of the day, out of everyone right now, friends, family, everything like that. Marion Mate, the guy I'm fighting right now, he has the most in common with me. You know, like probably fucking probably friends if we are fighting right now. Like that's just that's just the way it is. Like you know, us like us fighters are all like. If you look at it, like the way I look at it, like we're all we're all the same, like we're all coming from the same thing, we're all tracing the same dream. Only one of us can have it. That's the uniting thing. Only like there's only very few of us that can have it. We're all chasing the same thing though. So it's great to see people getting on board and people want to see the Irish talent kind of rise up. Cause Irish lads fighting other Irish lads is fucking the shows are savage. Some of the shows you get to see here are fucking unreal. It's deadly. Like the level is the level is impressive. It is, it's very impressive. Yeah, it is because obviously I the past two years I've been going around show to show, obviously, as you would have known. And like you're looking at like the likes of you, your Conor McCarthy's, your key kills, yeah. you like um Damien McGuigan, who's after bursting onto the scene this year. Yeah, he's very um, good. Uh just just so like I people are gonna go, Oh, I should have sent him that either. You would be here all day, like the likes of Jess, yeah. Everson and Kofi, all these people, but um like said, once and then like I said, what I like is the UFC, like in the past 
six months to a year, what what six fighters have been signed, which is just yeah. fantastic. Obviously, it wasn't the, the best debuts for all of them. Kiefer came in, I think, on two weeks. Shauna came in on like six weeks or something. Because like, when you get the call, you're taking it. But yeah, yeah they, 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 could, they, they Look, got there and, and that's all it takes. But I'm going to let you go now in a minute. Um, but like I said, you've talked about kind of what you want to do next year. Um, how you obviously you said you see the fight go, you don't go past the first round. Um, what like your preparations leading up to this? You said you've done a lot more road work. Has the overall training been intense though? Like, has it been more intense? Has it been upper level? Have you felt it different, or were you just training at that higher level, anyways, that you didn't need to go up another gear? Um, I was, I was training at that high level, anyways. I was trying to give me all when I'm in fight camp, but this, this, this time around, really just trying to finesse everything and get more a bit professional about it and just changing my attitude towards it a lot just because in terms of like it's my job and it's just it's what I do now it's how I'm bringing home the paper and it's just me getting up and running every morning doing my sprints doing my hot and cold therapy anything like that like that's all just work to me now like that's all it has to be done there's no question about it I can't I'm not missing a day's work you know because it's it's a there's no there's no fruits from labour that you didn't put in like you know there's no you're not going to get to enjoy that moment when you know you didn't put in the work even if you get by like you know even if I beat Marion this weekend and I hadn't put in the work you're still like oh, buy that one like no I don't want that feeling I want to be in there knowing that I deserve to be there and uh, I'm meant to I'm exactly where I'm meant to be you know because I am exactly where I'm meant to be and it's just about I'm reaffirming that kind of all the trend I'm doing all the shit I'm doing you know, confidence doesn't just come out of nowhere. Like, I put in a serious amount of work to prove to myself that I'm the person that I say I am. Yeah, and I like the way you put it there, that when you go to training every day, when you're going in there, you know, you don't want to be left. Just say if you ever lost a fight, you don't want to be left with that feeling, I could have done more. No. Where if, you've, if you've done everything you could, it's like me just say, if I miss two days work, I lose pay. So for you, that's experience. That's that's tra- like that's like yeah. That's yeah. improvement. So that's the way I look at it. You're missing out. I'd be missing out on two days' pay. You're missing out on two days' worth of experience. Yeah. That little, that respect. little detail that could change my whole fight or anything like that, like all that shit, all that shit, all that shit is very like it's very important. You have to stay on the grind, and even just it's about your mind and discipline. Your mind as well, just doing that shit when you don't want to do it the most, because most of the time you don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's just exactly. What's it, Mike? Like, I said, do it like do do something you hate like you love it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But That's the way it needs to be. I'm gonna let you go. Is there anything you want to say before you go, or anyone you want to shout out? And once again, I want to thank you for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I can't wait to see this. Whether I'm there in person or I watch it on pay per view, I'm not going to guarantee you one or the other yet. Yeah. But I can't wait to see this. Thank you, man. And no, nothing really. Um, I'll shout out my sponsors real quick. If that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, shout out to. Uh, Kevin Dunn from Or420 Rollins Plays. He uh, is actually sponsoring me. Or on Fitzpatrick, uh, Fitz Civils and Demolition, and Tommy McNamara, uh, who runs a Toro. Um, there's another few guys that are after sponsoring me. I'm actually putting up a few posts about them. Uh, go check them out. Just little small sponsors. Um, Dan Boleyn, uh, Paddy Weldon, and a few other people. But a lot of people, uh, I've had a lot of support from my town, basically. And I just want to jump on and say thanks for that. Uh, people of Port are really fucking, they join together and they're really supportive when it comes to shit like this, when it comes to supporting their own and seeing the homegrown talent, they're really supportive. And I'm after seeing that a lot in the last few weeks and just want to express fucking I'm very grateful for it. And then just thank you for the interview, David. Unreal. No problem. I always enjoy talking. So I remember our first one, I think we talked for an hour and it was one of the best interviews I'd had. It was just fantastic. Yeah. And you've always been so good to me, so humble. And you're such a great young lad. And you just like you go in and you just want to work and do your thing. And that's what you've been doing. So that's why I'm looking forward to this weekend. Um, and I will see you. I do, I'll either see you there or, or I'll be watching from home. But it's going to be. Yeah. Thank you so much. Sweet. Thank you, man. Listen, you're a legend. Thank you. Thank you.